Climate change is going to mean more extremes. More extreme heat waves, more extreme hurricanes, more extreme fire seasons. My name is Jeff Berardelli, and I'm a meteorologist and climate specialist from CBS News. Jeff Berardelli says climate change is a big factor in the increased power of storms like Hurricane Isaias and other hurricanes we'll see this season. This season is on an accelerated pace, in fact, a record pace. And part of that is due to extraordinarily warm temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean. And part of that is due to human-caused climate change. We've seen an increase of around two degrees Fahrenheit in the waters in most of the Atlantic Ocean, especially the tropical Atlantic. Warmer water is like high octane fuel for tropical systems. That's not the only reason, but climate change does contribute to it. We say climate change loads the dice for a more active uh, hurricane season. More intense hurricanes are likely because of warmer water temperatures. But we are expecting more intense hurricanes and more damaging hurricanes in the future. Berardelli says we can see climate change at work in other places as well. So we had a tremendous heat event between January and June in Siberia, in the Arctic Circle. Um, Human-caused climate change made that 600 times more likely. The chance of that happening without human-caused climate change would only be once every 80,000 years. So it was virtually impossible. What about the scorchingly hot temperatures we've seen across the planet? This is not the first time we've seen it get to 129 degrees in Death Valley or 118, you know, 120 degrees in Phoenix, Arizona, or 125, 126 degrees in parts of the Middle East. It does happen. But there is absolutely no doubt that these types of extreme heat waves are becoming much more common than they would have been, let's say, 50 years ago or so. Uh, recently, we've seen tremendous heat waves in Europe. Uh, Lucifer in 2017, that heat wave was made 10 times more likely by human-caused climate change. And just last year, again during the summer in Europe, we had two heat waves. Both of those were at least 10 times more likely because of climate change. There was a heat wave last year in Canada that extended really from Canada all the way to Japan. That was virtually impossible, couldn't have happened without human-caused climate change. And so these extremes that we're seeing uh, are happening a lot more often. Berardelli says climate change is even at work in the recent locust invasions. We have seen an unprecedented outbreak of locusts in the eastern part of Africa. The evidence is pointing to the probability that climate change is contributing to locust outbreaks that are worse than they were in the past. Berardelli notes that the causes of climate change are crystal clear. There's really only one thing that's contributing to the warming of Earth right now, and that is human-caused climate change. It is greenhouse gases. It's the burning of fossil fuels, releasing carbon dioxide, and the release of methane into the atmosphere. It forms kind of a blanket which traps heat in and causes Earth's temperature to rise. It is certainly not solar activity because solar activity has actually gone down a lot over the past several years. So we know it's not that. Uh, and when we quantify all the possible contributors to why the globe is warming, it all adds up to basically all, if not absolutely all, of climate change and warmer temperatures is caused by humans. So what is to be done? So climate change is becoming a big enough problem that we need to throw the kitchen sink at it. There's no one solution. Uh, you know, we like to say there's no silver bullet, there's silver buckshot. So we have to do many, many things. It's certainly not one thing at all. We definitely have to reduce our dependency on fossil fuels. That means we need to switch our electricity system over to solar, over to wind, maybe nuclear. Some people, you know, agree that nuclear is a way to go. You know, it's kind of 50-50 split uh, in the climate community. So we need to electrify just about everything. And we need our cars to be electric cars. So we just need to reduce our fossil fuel dependency. In addition to that, it would also be a good idea to do our best to try to trap as much carbon dioxide, so essentially absorb carbon dioxide. We call it carbon capture. So we can do that by planting more trees. That's a wonderful example of kind of using natural solutions. Uh, farmers can help do that on their farms by sequestering a carbon in the soil. And we can also build uh, technology that will sequester, uh, you know, capture carbon and sequester it, take it out of the atmosphere. So we need to not only decrease the amount of carbon dioxide and methane that we're releasing into the atmosphere, we also need to, you know, find means with which to suck up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And we need to do it quickly. For this meteorologist, climate change is not only a scientific problem. For me, it's, it's believe it or not, it's a moral and ethical thing. You know, we're leaving this earth a lot worse 
than the way we found it. And it's our, our children and our grandchildren that are gonna have to pay the price. There's even a religious and spiritual reason to not be happy about what we're doing to the earth right now. Because if you believe that this is God's creation, uh, we should be taking care of it. We should be stewards of the earth and we're not doing that. Uh, if you look at it from an economic standpoint, we're gonna lose trillions of dollars because of climate change. And you know what? By actually heading it off at the pass, by, by putting money in now and mitigating climate change, we're gonna not only save trillions of dollars, we're probably gonna create a tremendous amount of jobs and economic opportunity all over the world by you know uh, embracing what is going to be a renewable energy revolution. Climate change is here right now and it's only gonna get worse in the future unless we start to combat it very forcefully right now. This is Inside Edition Digital.